Hey guys, welcome back to Unstop Biology. And today we are going to start off with a new chapter, which is Chapter Twelve of Class Twelfth NCERT. So basically, this chapter is all about the applications of biotechnology. So guys, if you remember, in the last video, we discussed all about what are the processes of biotechnology. What is recombinant DNA technology? How do we do it? What are the tools required for recombinant DNA technology? And then we studied that, you know, with the help of biotechnology, we can have products, you know, at industrial scale. So basically, biotechnology deals with industrial scale production of biopharmaceuticals and biologicals, right? So I'll write this definition for you: biotechnology. it does what it deals with industrial scale production okay and industrial scale production of what of biopharmaceuticals and different type of biologicals and what does it uses by using you know genetically modified microbes fungi plants and animals right so guys there are basically three critical research areas of biotechnology first one is to provide best catalyst and in the form of what in the form of a microbe or a pure enzyme so the first research area for, of biotechnology is to provide best catalyst right now the second one is i'll write it first is to provide best catalyst second is creating proper conditions through engineering for that catalyst to act right so to create optimal conditions right through engineering to for that catalyst to act and the what is the third research area third research area is downstream processing technology to purify the protein or organic compound so third one is downstream processing technologies so now you know that we have studied all three critical research areas right so now we are going to see how do we apply these methods of biotechnology in various fields and in this video we are going to study all, of, all about biotechnical biotechnological application in agriculture right so basically guys you know we have improved a, you know agriculture a lot by the help of technology right so basically there are three options that can be thought of for increasing food production now what are these three options we will see that so the first option the first option is the agrochemical based agriculture right so the chemical based agriculture basically agro chemical based agriculture what is the second possible option that we can th thought think of organic agriculture organic agriculture and what is the third one the genetically engineered the genetically engineered crop based agriculture right genetically engineered crop based
agriculture right so you know different types of plants bacteria right and a lot of things so basically you know we studied about green evolution you guys must be heard about green revolution so what happened in that is you know we modified the older ways of agriculture and we introduced new ways right so basically we introduced new ways in the form of pesticides fertilizers in agriculture that got our produce our agricultural produced increased by a lot and that is when we say we we had green revolution right so basically that succeeded in tripling the food supply but again green revolution is not enough to feed the growing human population you will have to remember that as well but use of a genetically modified crop can be a possible solution right and how do we do it so basically plants bacteria fungi animals whose genes have been altered by manipulation so what we do do is we basically improve and modify genes of age we of any such organism right we manipulate it we alter it and these organisms are known as genetically modified genetically modified organisms or gmo right now genetic modification has a lot of plus points now what are these plus points so genetic modification has made crops more tolerant to stress to the abiotic stress now these stress can be cold drought salt or heat right so that is the first positive point that it has made crops more tolerant to abiotic stress right now it has also reduced reliance on chemical pesticides the pest resistant crops so basically we use chemical pesticides to remove the pests right now that you know uh, hampers the uh, nutritional quality of the food right so what it has done is it has reduced reliance on these harsh chemical pesticides that is second now what is the third one it has helped to reduce post harvest losses right so after your harvest is done you lose a lot of crop in various processes so this has basically helped reducing the post harvest losses as well and what is the fourth one it has increased efficiency of mineral usage by plants right so what used to happen is that earlier plant used to exhaust the fertility of soil easily and you know in less amount of time now the efficiency of mineral uses by plants has been you know increased and that is the reason early exhaustion of fertility of soil is decreased right and what is the last one it has enhanced the nutritional value of food as well for example we have something called as golden rice golden rice what is this golden rice this golden rice is rich in vitamin a right so we have genetically modified the normal rice to produce vitamin a rich rice and this increases the nutritional value of food right so there are so many positive points of genetic modification now even in addition to that what we can create is we can basically create a plant as per our need right so we can create a tailor made plant these plants can be called as tailor made plant right so we can have we can create a tailor made plant to supply alternative resources to industries say in the form of starches fuels pharmaceuticals so we can basically what do what we can as per our need change the capacity change the form and we can alter 
a normal plant into a genetically modified one right now one example of this is bt cotton okay so guys we studied the name in the previous chapter as well so basically there is a toxin which is bt toxin this toxin is produced by a bacteria which is bacillus thuringiensis right and bt is short form of the bacteria's name itself right now this bt toxin gene has been cloned from the bacteria and it has been expressed in plants to provide resistance to insects without the need of insecticides so for example you have bt cotton you have bt corn you have bt rice you have bt tomato you have bt potato you have bt soya bean so or in all of these plants what has happened is they are now resistant to insects right so we'll take an example of bt cotton and what happens in bt cotton is that there are some strains of this bacteria bacillus thuringiensis which produce something they right? what do they produce they produce proteins and these proteins kill certain insects right so there are lepidopterans there are there are coleopterans there are dipterans all these all of these are insects right you have worms you have beetles you have mosquitoes so or they these basically proteins kill certain insects right now this bacillus thuringiensis produces protein crystals during a phase of their growth and these crystals contain a toxin what is the toxin insect insecticidal protein it's an intersect in insecticidal protein right now what happens is when this protein is inside the bacteria it is in inactive state and that is why the bacteria is not being killed even after it is producing this toxin but as soon as the insect ingest the inactive toxin it is converted into a active form and why it is converted into the active active uh, form because of alkaline ph of gut of the insect right so basically the gut the alkaline ph present in the gut solubilizes the crystal and it the inactive protein becomes active and it binds to the surface of the epithelial cells and it creates pores which causes cell swelling and then ly lysis and eventually causes death of the insect right so what we did is we basically isolated specific bt toxin gene genes so we isolated bt toxin genes okay and we incorporated these genes in several plants such as cotton right now the choice of genes depends upon the crop and the targeted pest right and bt toxins basically can target not just one insect but group of insects so for different type of insect we basically take up different type of bt toxin gene and we incorporate it in the plant right now this toxin that we are talking about is coded by a gene which is known as cri gene this bt toxin is coded by a gene which is known as cri gene and if you talk about the scientific name it is cri 1 a c okay and you have different types of cri genes so you have cri 1 ac you have cri cri 2 ab right now what happens is that there are a number of genes like that for example proteins encoded by a gene cri1ac or say cri2ab 
control the cotton ball worms corn borers and now when these are incorporated in the crop the crop becomes resistant to certain insects right now let's talk about the other side of it so the pest resistant plants that we are making right so basically there are several parasites as well guys right there are several nematode parasites right and these there is a wide variety of plants and animals which you know have these parasites inside them right for example there is a nematode which is known as incognitia melanodigyne incognitia which infects root of tobacco plant plant and it causes a great reduction in yield now what happens is that there is a strategy which was adopted to prevent this infestation and that was based on rna interference rna interference r n a i okay so this takes place in all eukaryotic organisms as a method of cellular defense and it involves silencing of specific mrna due to complementary double stranded rna okay molecule so what happens is that the double stranded rna molecule binds and prevents translation of mrna so it silences the M mrna messenger mrna rna right and the source of this the complementary rna could be formed basically could be form an infection by viruses having rna genome or it can also form mobile genetic elements such as no which are known as transposons that replicate via rna intermediate right so basically using agrobacterium vectors nematode specific genes were introduced into the host plant and introduction of that dna was such that it produced sense and antisense rna into the host cell and these two rna being complementary to each other they form a double stranded rna and this initiates rna interference and silences the specific mrna right so guys with this what we have seen is that the consequence of this is that now the parasite is not able to survive in the host and it does not expresses specific interfering rna and the plant is able to protect itself from the parasite so with this we have finished the first topic of class 12 chapter 12 which is the application of biotechnology in agriculture so i hope you understood this topic properly guys again a very important topic so please do like the video and share it with your friends if you did understand it and yes please do not forget to give your feedback if you have any doubt you can either comment on the video or you can also send your doubts on whatsapp i have given the whatsapp number in the description of the video and yes guys if you are new to the channel if you are coming to the channel for the first time please do not forget to subscribe it and press the bell icon to get all the videos that i'll be uploading thanks for watching this video guys take care see you in the next one bye bye